Hello and welcome to Not a Safe Space. This is Sabrina. And Tabby. Hey girl, what's going on? Not much. How are you? Doing well. You're in the new studio space? Yes, I am. Not really a studio, more like my front Florida room, but yeah. I had to put signs up on both my mudroom door and my front door that says, not a safe space recording, do not enter. (laughs) I don't even imagine how I could get away with doing that. I mean, I record in my office and we still hear dog dog footsteps, uh, FedEx people. Ethan was featured on an episode a couple weeks ago, just sitting in the background. Like, he didn't see us recording. He's like, I'm just going to sit right here. Whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't care. No big right. deal. Where I have literally kicked everybody out of the house. The dogs have been kicked out of the house. They are literally in the backyard. I can watch them as we're recording. And they're chasing birds. Nice. Yes. Nice. So, uh, we're both wearing stripes today. Look at us. Yes, we are. And we did not plan this. No. We're looking good in our black and white stripes. So, um, uh, 23 days more till Christmas. Are you freaking out yet? Um, I am now fucking a thanks for reminding me. I I have gotten none, nothing done. No shopping done. I have three presents, two for Amaris. And then one just came in the mail the other day for Lorelai from a grandma. So, uh, Amazon prime Christmas shopping list had best things ever. We've just sent them to our relatives and now the stuff will start to float in. And maybe after, maybe after the end of this week, I'll just start Amazon priming it and there'll be packages, packages on the door. So did you see that Facebook meme where this woman had saved her Amazon prime boxes over the course of a year? And there was like, I think like 65 of them. And she retaped them and put them all on her front door to freak her husband out. <laughs> That's funny. Or I've seen the ones where they they repackage it for people to steal it. And they're like, here, you little fuckers, take my trash or whatever's in there. Yes, exactly. I like that. <laughs> well, I have a note on here for if anybody is in need of a shopping or a Christmas gift. Like we said, there's 23 days left. Tabby, don't you have a recommendation of what they can buy? Um, yeah, I sure do. (laughs) Well, go ahead, girl. Let's hear it. So let's go ahead. And if you're looking for a Christmas gift and not sure, everybody loves books. So you can order a copy of The Burden of Trust on Amazon. And, um, it's an e it's an ebook and it's also in, um, print form as well. And, um, It is about an arrogant actor who accidentally falls head over heels for a lesbian who has a dark and twisted past. And it's the beginning of a trilogy. And it's great. And it makes a great gift. I've already bragged about it. I've bought it for family members and friends as gifts. And they're all hooked now and waiting for the second book that our dear co-host is actively working on. So uh, everybody go check it out on Amazon. It's called The Burden of Trust. Yep. Right? Exactly. and order it for your fellow bookworms. Yeah, exactly. Or someone who might be interested, someone who's traveling and needs something to read on the plane. Right. So I was reading a book the other day, uh, a book that I have for you in paper form. Okay. And then I bought myself an Audible so I could listen to it while I was driving. But the other morning I was in bed with your copy of the book out, playing it on Audible, reading it as late and Nate was like I'm pretty sure it's not a fucking read along oh my god that is awesome and I did I had to turn it off because she's slow like I kept jumping ahead the lady that was reading it was a little slow uh oh. but it's the book bad feminist so I'm, I'm reading that right now I just got a new book in today or yesterday too called up all day um by Becca was she a Wester. slow feminist feminist She's, uh, she refers her to herself as a bad feminist. Oh, um, okay. You know, it, which I think I kind of explain myself as a bad feminist. I believe in equal rights, but, uh, I'm a fucking hypocrite left and right. You know, I, I believe in gender roles in some forms and I mean, I won't touch the fucking trash can. That's a man's job in my opinion. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. I make Dion take out the trash. <laughs> right. Right. So it's an interesting book so far. And it's an interesting twist because 
I thought it was coming from a white female author and she's actually black. So then she talks oh. about that too. And, and she's upper middle class black female. So then when she's talking about privilege and how much privilege she truly has. Right. It, it's, it's a pretty interesting book so far. I'm excited to actually get you your copy when I'm done with the read along. That would be awesome. I can't wait to read it. Nice. So uh, any other housekeeping that we need to make anybody aware of? Just everybody go to Google Play, iTunes, and subscribe and like and rate us. And I mean, just give us the five stars or the one star, however you want to rate it. But just take the two seconds and hit the freaking button, guys. Okay? That's it. Just hit the button. And then, uh uh-huh. What did you think about those reviews I sent you the other day? Oh, my gosh. They were so heartwarming and, like, I just melted. I told Dion and it was just, it's crazy. It's just conversation is having an impact on people's lives. Right. Here's, I'm going to read one out loud. It's called Raw and Unfiltered Girl Talk. The conversation you'd only have with your girlfriends, whether I agree or disagree, it's still funny and entertaining to listen to. My best friend died in 2014 from ALS, and this reminds me of the conversations I'd have with her. This podcast filled a missing part of my life. I just, my favorite part of that is where she says, whether I agree or disagree. Yes, I love that. She's one of us. Whoever Heather Ann C is, she is one of us. She is. And um, she's such an awesome person because um, I know her. Oh, you do? That's so cool. Yeah, she's um, um, one of my Facebook friends. And okay. she's she's pretty uh, cool, I got to tell you. Yeah, I love that. And then the other one says, if you really want to... If you want to hear two friends talking out loud about the stuff you're always thinking in your head, this is the podcast for you. Love how real they are and how they stay true to themselves. I always look forward to hearing what they talk about next. I just love that, too. I love how everybody feels like they're friends with us now. Right. And that we're real because yeah. we are. My sister uh, called me. I get notes from show notes from my sister every single time she listens. OK. And uh, she said yesterday, did you did, have you listened to the forgiveness one yet? Well, you edit it. So you have. Yes. To she was like, "Ooh, you guys got real good in that one. I thought you guys were going to go at it. And I was like, what? And she Wait, was, yeah, the, we were episode talking, 16 or 15? 16, the most recent. Oh, one. okay. No, I have. Well, maybe I have. And I just don't remember because you yeah. know me. <laughs> we were talking about empathy, teaching it in schools. And oh, yeah, we were going to go at it on that one. <laughs> but she was like, that's good because. Yeah. Like she found it so entertaining. And and then she sent me um, uh, an app on how to punctuate sinitis. So that's, that's it's not, all. It's sinitis. Right. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. So the <laughs> I know, I know. So uh, see, look, I need a note on my door. There's my son giving us the peace out sign. There you go. All right. Um, so, oh, and the other thing we forgot to mention we're on freaking episode 17, guys. Mm. Sorry, it's a little late. There you are. We're on number 17. Welcome to 17. Um, do you remember being 17 years old? Yeah, yeah, I do. Did you like it? No. Really? I loved being in high school. Okay, but you <laughs> said okay. Had, okay, but you probably had a lot more freedom than I did. Oh, hell no. Yeah. No, I had no freedom. But why did you love it then? I loved my friends. I loved my high school. But listen, like we weren't allowed phone calls after 9 p.m. I was and even before like our phone calls, we were only allowed 10 minute segments of phone calls. So like this would have never happened. Like my dad right at 10 minutes would have been like, wrap it up. Do you know what that does to somebody who talks as much as I do? It suppresses you. Right. Right. Now, listen, I mean, I my dad had a lot of rules, but I was 17. I was sneaking out of my kitchen window late at night uh, having a good time. I there was no way to sneak out of my house. My mom had it set up. So at night we lived in a a three story townhouse. Uh huh. 
So there was no sneaking out of a window unless I was climbing down three, you know, uh, stories on the side of a brick building. Oh, nice. And if I went to go try to go downstairs, I'd have to pass her room and I would get caught. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, my mom was strict. I mean, she she was on it. She knew everything. Hell, she knew I was going to do something bad before I even knew I was going to do something bad. See, my dad was so strict but so regimented. So he went to bed at a certain time. He woke up at a certain time. So I knew those hours in between. Mm-hmm. Were, that was the time I could have fun and I could sneak out of the house and I just had to be up in the morning because every morning before he left, he would peek into our rooms. Right. So I would even have friends spend the night, but I would make them sleep in the closet, in our walk-in <laughs> closet, so that he couldn't see it. Like if I, I would ask first and he would say no. So, okay, well, then he goes to bed at 9.30, just sneak into my house. We'll go upstairs to my room, hang out at not, night, and then sleep oh. in my closet. No, see, I wouldn't get that. D was a very light sleeper. So if you went by her, like really loud, oh yeah, she wouldn't wake up. But if you tried to sneak by her, oh, she'd wake up instantly and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've met D? Come on. Yeah. You know you can't get anything past that little I love woman. Her. I love her. She loves you too. <laughs> she makes fun of me for killing a dog, whatever. We're not even going to talk about that. <laughs> no, no, we're not. <laughs> All right. All right. So I've got a game. Oh, Look. yay. I'm calling it grab bag. It looks bag. like you have a hat. I do. I have a hat with 11 different topics in it. And I just figured we'd pull from it. Oops, one of them just jumped out. So that's going to be the first one. That's going to be the jumper is going to be the first one. Oh, I really hope the topic isn't suicide. Even better, it's Hyman's. Are we talking about the right? Oh, okay, yeah. Right, so this is something that was um, uh, trending on Twitter, I think is the proper way to say it. That rapper and mogul T.I. takes his daughter for a virginity test, and when he was on his own podcast or on another podcast, him and his wife have a podcast. And then they were a guest talking about this birthday party that he had had for his daughter. And that, uh, I believed at that time she was 16. Um, and that she was 18 now and he still does it, but he takes her to the gynecologist and has her hymen checked and basically does a virginity test. And that this received so much response that, he was trending, the number trending so high on Twitter that mm. people thought he had died. When they wow. saw the number, like, I can't remember which other rap, rapper saw it, but it was like, holy shit, T.I. died by the time I got off the plane. That's, this is the only thing that could spark this much interest. But really, it was about his daughter's hymen. So what do you think about that? Okay, so the... The doctor, oh my gosh, so this is just craziness. First of all, who fucking does that in today's day and age? Seriously. <laughs> right. Um, second of all, you can freaking break your hymen putting in a tampon. That was something that a lot of people brought up. You could do it um, putting in a, uh, a tampon. You could do it riding a horse. You could do it um a bicycle that's a bicycle. when we you know when we were kids you could break your hymen with the bike <laughs> right what do you think about him trying to police her virginity you know if he's gonna police her virginity he needs to do it in such a way that he is preparing her for life and giving her life skills and going, let's not get you in these situations where this could potentially happen, but mm -hmm. not going to a doctor and saying, is she still a virgin or not? That's not going to do anything. Right. I mean, because the dam if he's really concerned about her virginity, he would be wanting to protect it, not mm -hmm. necessarily just check to see if she's still one. Cause that's just dumb. Right. Well, I think um, I I like the idea of a 16 year old. You live in my house or even 18 year old. Right. You live in my house. It's my way, my rules. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want you having premarital sex, 
that is my right. This is my house. If you don't like it, let go of all this privilege. Because let's be honest, T.I. is very, very wealthy. Mm -hmm. You can let go of all this privilege and slut it up all you want. Oh, absolutely. But at 16, what is he going to do? Turn her into social services? She's a minor. (laughs) Right. I know. Uh, I kind of find it similar to drug testing, though, right? Like, I... There were a lot of women that talked about how it was invading her privacy. I'm not sure if, do you think that minors have privacy in your own home? That they, they should be allowed no nope. privacy? Absolutely not. Sorry. And do you believe that we should be able to drug test them? A I minor. would say yes, a minor, yeah. yes. I mean, or even someone that's, yes, I would say. Yeah, as long as you're living in my house, I can drug test you all I want, right? Right, you're my child. I have that right. You, right. You are in, I am legally required to protect you. Right. And therefore, I'm going to do what I need to do to protect you. I, I also like the idea that a father is going to these appointments with a daughter because normally let's be honest, they put that off on the mom, right? Normally I would have never talked about my fucking hymen with my father for God's sakes. Uh, If, if I wanted to not go to school that day, all I would have to say is I had cramps and my dad would be like, okay, go back to bed. Right. He was, he wasn't talking about it. So the question though is, did, did he take her once a year for her annual exam mm-hmm. and they wanted to have the hymen check? Or was he taking her every three months to the doctor specifically to have her hymen check? Right. Now, there's quite a difference. Yeah, there is. And then there's still even, because I'm not so against it, but there still is this yucky feeling of, all right, well, this is her body. And everybody knows if you're a woman, what it feels like to put your legs up in that stirrup. And it's and, cold and it's uncomfortable and you're scared. I mean, yeah. you're straight up scared. And I don't think men, not not all men, but I don't think a lot of men realize what a scary time that is in a young girl's life. Yeah. Even like, if she's not having sex. Right. Because I, I, I support him not wanting her daughter to have sex, right? He's trying to break a cycle of no different than what I'm trying to do. I, I was a few days before my 21st birthday, before I had my son. I, I want him to get through college. I want him to have everything we didn't. And if that means I want him not to have sex, I don't want him to be having sex. I know there's nothing I can do to stop it. Now I can make it difficult. Exactly, as you should. <laughs> right, I don't have to just say, all right, have fun. Right, but you're not dragging your son into a doctor's appointment and saying, you know, having some I'm... tests on to see if he's fucked somebody. Yeah, thank God, no way. Yeah. I mean, so, there's a could you imagine there's... doing that to your daughter, though? Oh, Do you God. see what I mean? Maybe, but maybe I can see myself doing that. There's still this gross feeling about it because my body, my, my, you know, like I, if there's a gross feeling being a female where I, I don't want to be okay with it. There is the other part of me, the mom side of me that says, no, I don't want you slutting it up. And I'm going to take your little slut ass into the doctor and we're checking you. Cause I know you haven't been riding any fucking horses. Right. So let's go. <laughs> so, so I got gotcha. you. But, at the, you know, it, it feels almost like a double standard. And it's nobody's fault, but there's no test to see if boys are out having sex. But all of a sudden, now we're going to go up some girl's vagina just to see if she had. And it's very, again, it's that yucky feeling. Right. You know, it, it feels very invasive. But we also That's still want to believe thing. that our gr- yeah. yeah but we also want to believe that the girls are innocent. Right. And, and I do like, again, that TI is having these discussions with his daughter and, and hopefully it, it brings more conversations where she can come to him and talk to him about things. It's just the gynecologist part that is a problem. Like that is visitors 
I don't bring visitors to the gyno with me. No, you know, that's just, no, you don't. And like that, that's, I think that's the weird part. It's like, you're taking your kid to the gyno to check her virginity. I mean, it feels very 1400s when someone got married and they checked to make sure the marriage was consummated. Right. And I, that's how yeah. it feels. It feels dirty. It does. I think it's the gynecologist and up the vagina part that I'm uncomfortable with. What I would totally be okay with is if T.I. with his multi-million fucking dollars bought a lie detector and sat that little slut down and then taped her up (laughs) and then said, have you sucked a dick? Have you touched a dick? Have you done this? Then you'll know you're not up in her vagina. Right. Exactly. I'm okay with that. That there's nothing wrong with that part. (laughs) I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Strap her up. Electrocute her if she's lying. I don't care what you got to (laughs) do. Right. (laughs) Right. I think it's just the up in the vagina part that is just a little too much for me. And I think it's also the dad part of it, too. Yeah. I see it. Like, I kind of like that the dad. Like, like where's the mom? You know what I mean? Why isn't the mom... You know, there are, mom needs to be helping her guide her through this womanhood as right. well. Now, now, in his, mom was involved, and mom was involved in the conversation. It's just, mom isn't famous. Got it. The okay. way T.I. is, right? But okay. she, she was, and so I like that dad and daughter are talking. Or like in my case, I've got son and, and mom that we have these conversations together. I just don't. I would never have had my dad in my fucking gynecologist appointment. Uh-huh. No. I, I don't mean, even I, think I didn't even said, said the word to one another. No. And I can yeah. tell you what, my mom wasn't going to the gynecologist. No. No. Yeah. All right, cool. So let's let's pull out another one. Ready? All right, let's dig into that hat. Since we're done with the vaginas. Hey, this is what we talked about on Oh my goodness. On oh, Twitter. For fuck's sakes. Yes, it is. So Woo, it, here we go. The new movie, Charlie's Angels, just came out. Starring Kristen Stewart and what's the other lady's name? I don't know. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. What um she, oh, yeah, yeah. Elizabeth Banks was the there main you go. girl. Yeah, Elizabeth Banks is she plays Bosley. In the new um, Charlie's Angels, she was. Wait, the isn't direct- Bosley supposed to be a guy? It is supposed to be a guy, which is why I'm. You can't tell, but I'm rolling my eyes. Um, okay. No, I can see it. Yeah, he's, uh, she was the director and producer as well, and then she was in the movie. Kristen Stewart played the main Charlie's Angels. Can you hear somebody banging on my door? No, that's my fucking dog. Your dog's banging on your door. Yeah. Because he Where? can't read the sign. Hold on, I'm gonna walk over there. He's gonna stop. He well, stop. of course your he dog can't. Can... Says, leave me the fuck alone. I'm recording on a safe space. Well, that's because oh. he's a dog, and because he can't read. Right, right. So uh, she posted. So the movie came out. They spent a lot of money on this movie. Right. And then it flopped. And. Okay. And Elizabeth Banks came out with an article that did I share or you? I, I share. I don't remember. I, I think, think. I think. I think I responded to somebody's tweet about it, and you responded back to me. Yeah. So it says she was blaming the audience for not supporting an all woman cast an all-woman directing, and that this was going to set precedence. Well, it was more than just the audience. She was also blaming men specifically for this. Right. What what do you think about all that? I call bullshit. Yeah. Straight up. I call bullshit. I agree. The movie flopped because it was a bad movie. Not that I've seen it, but... We have had two other Charlie's Angels that were made that did phenomenal. We've had other female role, um, main role movies that Wonder did Woman. Wonder Woman. Captain oh, and Marvel. they tr- 
And they tried defending that, saying it was piggybacked off of um, all the comic books. Right. Right. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Because even if you were to compare this all-female cast to, say, the book club, which was an all-female class. Love that cast, movie, too. And it's a fucking amazing movie. And people came flocking to that movie with an older generation and not selling it based on sex. It wasn't hot lead characters. It was older, mature women. And it was fucking funny. I've watched that movie a dozen times. I love that movie. I love it too. It's amazing. And I actually, what I love best about that movie was the way that it was able to bring a younger generation and an older generation together. Even though the movie wasn't, the basis of the movie wasn't around that, it just did something because I remember when I went to the movie theater and I'm sitting there and there were younger women and older women and we were all interacting with each other. I mean, I was sitting there, I actually was like kind of patted this woman's hand because it was so funny and she just held my hand back and we're laughing and I didn't even know who she was but it was just so cool yeah yeah I agree so neither one of us watched the movie so we can't say whether or not the movie sucked but what I can say is I'm a fan of Charlie's Angels I was named after one of the angels which Kristen Stewart was playing which was I was kind of excited about that part because in the original or the so they've already made a Charlie's Angels movie, which Cameron Diaz. Yep. Um, Lucy Liu or Lucy. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was Lucy Liu. And then uh, Drew, Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. I love those two movies. Those was amazing. Yep. Um, they, they were great movies. I think the remake wasn't necessary right now. Nobody was wanting it. It still feels like those movies were just made. So it, if... I was going to see a remake. I would have rather seen Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, Lucy Liu back in those movies. Right. I've never once. Kristen Stewart is a dirty little hamster. She oh my is god! I, I cannot stand her. She is the worst actress in fucking life. I don't understand how she has made it in Hollywood and why people think she's good because she sucks. All her words and lines are she's a fucking stuttering goat right <laughs> so i right i i don't like her and so because of that i didn't i don't want to see the movie i wouldn't you know whether it's really bad i probably wouldn't i might have watched it but the moment i heard Kristen stewart i'm like uh no. Yeah, I and I tried. I I looked up because Lorelai and I watched the original, so I told her that a new one was coming out, and I tried the different versions of the trailer, and I was just like, whatever, I'll wait till it comes up on Hulu. Like, uh, hey. I'm not going to pay money. Exactly, it. because it's fucking expensive to go to the movies. Right, and so this is this is one of the best uh, tweets I heard about it. Elizabeth Banks, Charlie's Angel, set out to make an entertaining action film that is built on girl power. I respect her for taking for setting out on that task, but unfortunately, the film feels generic and altogether forgettable, which yeah. I agree with. And Absolutely. I, yeah, and I don't think she should be blaming men for that. Listen, no. women did not go out and watch that film. Exactly. Because had they gone out and watched that film with no men, it would have not Maybe, flopped. Yeah. flopped. And let's Sorry. be real. Who picks the movie? I mean, in my my life, if I want to go to the movie, I'm dragging my husband with me. Exactly. So that's a not a ticket. Time, yeah, that's that's women making the choices to not go see that movie. Yep. And for her to blame the audience or the men is such a perfect representation of how entitled Hollywood is. And they take no responsibility for their actions. Right. Her response should have been, whoops, I fucked up. I made a bad movie. Let me figure out what I did wrong and fucking learn from it. Right. But this, 
oh, I, it only failed because men didn't show up. Men are sexist and they're horrible and evil and da 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 Men had nothing to do with this. Yeah, that's the part that annoys me because I, um, is, and this is why I say I consider myself a bad feminist. As much as I love women, I, I'm also the mother of a son and I support, and, and I love my husband and I work in mostly a male dominated industry. I like men. I like Mm -hmm. my male friends and I want to support and defend them as well. So for her to try to piggy bank off of the movement that we as women are trying to make and then blame it on men, fuck you. We got plenty of shit we can blame them for. Let's not blame them for your shitty ass movie. Exactly. And you know, what's really fucked up is that believe it or not, Women need men in the women's movement if we want to actually make the changes we want. So by blaming men and castrating them and telling them they're fucking horrible because they didn't go to a movie, a dumbass movie, is just setting us backwards. I agree. I agree. And it, it waters down the cause of what everybody's trying to do, of where we're trying to be for, for women when you make big deals out of nothing. Yeah. And, and make it an issue. This is going to be a, a monumental movie. Bullshit. Well, yeah, it's not a mental monumental movie. No. Oh, and you want to know another leading um, cast movie that did fucking amazing? Hidden Figures. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's just ridiculous. She had bad casting, and that's what I blame. And I think it was too soon, and um, she did a bad job. And I remember reading a tweet that said, well, you had no problem in um, taking the money from Hunger Games that she was in. Right. And Hunger Games fucking brought in billions. Right. And you know, female Elizabeth, role. Right. Elizabeth Banks was in the Hunger Games and she, that is a, a female lead that yep. made plenty of money. Oh, yeah. Because it had great acting and it had right. a great storyline. Right. You know, remakes can only be done so many times. And it has to be the right timing. There yes. has to be a want and desire for it. And I've never once heard anybody said it's time to make a new Charlie's Angels. I feel like we already have in this generation. They did it too early. In my they opinion. did it way too early. And not only that, but we have a lot of other comic book based, even though Charlie's Angels isn't a comic book based, but it's still superpowers, right? right. It kind of falls into that same genre. Movies. Of action. We have so, yeah. Right. We have so many of those movies right now. It's like you're vomiting them so much. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I totally agree with you. My sister was just calling me because she likes to call me when I'm on calls and then yell at me for not picking up. Yes, but why does she like to call you while you're on this call? I don't know. She always does. <laughs> she does it on purpose. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe she, she wants to be on the show. Right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? Me and my sister arguing back oh and forth. Oh, my God. So, um, so, yeah, so we agree. I think Elizabeth Banks is is doing a bad job. Uh, she's uh, The article was bullshit. Her statement was bullshit. Um, if you went and watched the movie, let us know if it sucked or not. I mean, we don't know. I'm going to assume it did, just like Tabby did. But I, I was like, wait, did you see it? I'm or, like, no. Right, but let us know. I mean, I'm not a fan of Kristen Stewart, so I'm no, not going to go not. spend my money on it. Mm-mm. Nope, not at all, because it's way too expensive to spend money on something that's shitty. For real, I agree. All right, grab bag, here I go. All right, get your hand back in that hat, let's see. She just sent me a thing that says, I'm going to need a copy of your recording schedule. (laughs) I told you! (laughs) All right. Oh, this is fun. Dildo on the street. Dildo on the street? Can you please explain? Because my mind is going in a lot of different ways right now. (laughs) So on my Facebook. You have a um, dildo? No. But, oh, speaking of, hold on. I want to take a stop because I missed something beforehand. I want to put out a congratulations to one of our listeners. Um, uh, Nate and I attended a wedding this weekend. Not that the dildo reminds me of her at all. (laughs) Um, 
But um, I want to say congratulations to Erica and Niall, who um, Erica is a listener and her husband's a listener. He shared our our screenshot the other day on his Instagram and uh, they got married. So I just want to say congratulations to them. Nate and I have decided when we retire, we're going to become professional wedding crashers because we have so much fun at weddings. So um, that's what we have for to look to. Now, back to the dildos. Okay, well, congratulations, Erica. (laughs) And Niall, yes. Niall is a a listener, too. All right. So on my Facebook the other day, a friend posted that the she saw a flesh-covered dildo complete with a suction cup on the sidewalk. Okay. How the fuck does that happen? (laughs) Where was it? Like, what city? Uh, Virginia Beach. (laughs) I don't know. That's because, like, if it was San Francisco with all the homeless people, it might make sense, but... First of all, (laughs) why are you walking around with... Maybe out of someone's bag. But why are you walking around with your big-ass dildo? Shouldn't it be suction cup somewhere? Well, maybe they were taking it, um, to a party. You never know, because... There's sex parties. How do you think all the sex toys get to a sex party? I I just <laughs> don't know how well that facial expression. You lose your dildo. I, I don't like- know either. I mean, your dildo is a very important part of your life. Well, first of all, they're expensive as fuck. Right. I'm going to guess 80 to 100 dollars, right? Minimum. Depending and- on the dildo. Yeah, I mean, this one came with a suction cup, so. (laughs) Those aren't necessary. Well, it depends on how big it was. The bigger it is, the more expensive it is. Right, and all the gadgets. Um, Okay, was it a black cock or was it a white cock? I don't know that. Okay. Why is one easier to lose than the other? (laughs) I don't know. I was just (laughs) curious. So it kind of reminded me of... um, do you ever see when you like one shoe on the sidewalk or what? Yes. And you wonder where the hell the other one went. Right. Like you're just walking along and you're like, Oh, oh, fuck it. I'll just keep going. No, I mean, I've never experienced that. I've seen it, but like, I don't understand it. Now I've seen shoes on power lines before. Right. Which are intentional, but just to lose one shoe is as strange to me as losing your dildo. Did it fall out of her bag or his bag or his? You never know. And they didn't want to pick it up. And they were like, oh, that wasn't me. I didn't know my dildo. Just keep walking, keep walking. And then hoping to go back for it later. Is that something you go back for later? God, I'd hope hope someone wouldn't go back for their dildo after it's been sitting on the street for how many hours? Right. Also, is it something that you take to the lost and found? No, 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 no. You don't pick that up. I mean, because I'm, I, I'm assuming it was not in a pack. Was not in a no, package. No, not in a package. Yeah. So you have to assume it's been used. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was going over to a sleepover and it fell out of someone's bag and they didn't realize it until they got there and go, well, shit. Where's my dildo? Where's my fucking dildo? Exactly. Well, you know, and look. I don't know how it'd fall out of the bag, but I can tell you when I travel, sometimes I take mine with me. You do? Fuck yeah, I do. I got to get off. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't care where I am. I mean, unless I'm going to like overseas or something or another and the hubby's coming with me, you know, no. But otherwise, the vibrant dildo, we're we're taking care of business. (laughs) It's, It's coming along with you like a first aid kit. Pretty much. It's kind of like my underwear. It's uh, you can't go anywhere without it. Right. Now I have taken like my, my bullet, which is the, that's the thing that I own and I love, um, on like a cruise ship with Nate and I, because on the cruise ship, we have a ton of fucking sex. I mean, there's no reason not to, the room is there 24 seven and there's nothing really else to do. Right. And I'd be really upset if I dropped that thing. Could you imagine it's connected to a string? If, if it was just, like, falling out of my purse and I had no idea, and there's that fuck, oh, God. It is dragging behind. For the record, if I did drop my flesh-covered dildo complete with suction cup, I would leave it. 
Yeah, you know. I'd keep I'm walking. A- no way I'm, am I picking that fucker up. I might be ballsy, ballsy enough to turn around and pick that shit right back up <laughs> and be like, nope, motherfuckers, that's too expensive. I'm going to wash this bitch and go home. <laughs> also, is it something that somebody finds and keeps? Do you think there's a nasty motherfucker out there that was like, ooh, it's my lucky day? Probably. <laughs> uh, pretty much. That's disgusting. Gross. Nasty. Gross. Oh, this was the other thing I thought about. What if husband and wife were driving down the street and she was like, motherfucker, I don't need you because I brought my dildo on vacation. And he's like, and and she's like wiggling it in his face like this. (laughs) And then he just, he just snatched the fucker and tossed it out of the fucking window. And she's pissed off. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's how I'd like to imagine it went down. That's what I would hope had happened. Yeah, something along that line. Um, all right, back to the grab bag. All right. So we've been in a vagina. We've uh, now been in dealing with dildos. <laughs> now yeah. what's next? All right, so this is Garth Brooks. So um, the American Music Awards or Country Awards were this past week. Um, did you watch it all? Did you, are you a fan of country music? Um, yes. Mm-hmm. So I watch. I didn't watch the, uh, awards, but I like to watch the performances afterwards. So okay. one of the big performances was they had a ton of female artists come out one by one. And they did this medley of great country lead songs and mm-hmm. from, from, you know, Reba McIntyre was there. Trisha Yearwood was there. Uh, the uh, I Mar- saw Loretta Lynn. Uh, yeah, Loretta Lynn. Lynn was in the audience watching, but they sang her song, um, Martina McBride, and all the women. You know, there's that song, uh, uh, Independence Day, was yes. all, and they were all singing that. And then Entertainer of the Year is announced, and Garth Brooks went one. Okay. So then on Twitter, which you can always go to Twitter if you want to catch a beef with someone. You're right. These mad women are saying that he shouldn't have won. That out of the 53 winners of Entertainer of the Year, only seven have been women. And that when you have a full female cast and you you or you know you do this big thing to make women empowerment all through the show but then you don't award it to a female that they were all unhappy about it what do you think so you're basically saying because you decided to produce a show that's celebrating women that a women a woman must automatically win right no Right. There's no fucking participation awards in this. No, he won because he won. He won. And to be Garth honest with Brooks. you, <laughs> men could bitch on the other hand saying, I didn't get to perform at this event because you guys made it all about women when there are famous country, male country singers right. that could have been on there as well. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think, again, it's forcing this narrative that's just not it would be fake and phony to be going through this movement and then say and the entertainer of the year is so and so there's no doubt in my mind Reba McIntyre if she has not won already if she's not one of the seven out of the 53 will what win one day because she is worthy of it but recently she hasn't produced anything right Mm. He has. He's been still producing. Right. And he's been, you know, unlike, I don't know what Reba's current travel schedule is, but Garth Brooks came out of retirement and has been traveling and performing, traveling and performing here in Jacksonville, had one day outsold or it sold out. So he scheduled three more days here. And he did that all over the country for a year. Right. Right. If that's not a fucking entertainer who's just there to entertain people, he was only charging... I think somewhere it was like it was one cost for the entire arena, whether you were on the floor or not. I think it was like eighty dollars per ticket. That's not bad. No, not when you're Garth fucking Brooks. You could have charged 
$500 to be in the pit pass. Right. So he was doing that out of the mere point to entertain his fans. He deserves it. Agreed. And he put in the work. Right. Yeah, Look, I, ladies, just because you've got a fucking vagina doesn't mean you automatically win. Yeah, right. Right. And it is more of a I mean, discredit to our this movement and what we want as a whole to just start giving shit away. Exactly. Seriously. Earn it. Yes, you have to earn it. Nobody's right. given us any fucking awards because we've got vaginas and a microphone. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah, right? We should start a movement. We're so pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, I, di- I didn't like that. I And I hate when somebody, it's discrediting the work of Garth Brooks. And everybody knows fucking Garth Brooks. Exactly. I agree. And- yeah, I don't, and it's not like, like the women didn't get any credit in either. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. Don't like it. All right. Back into the grab bag. All right. What's the next one? Oh, well, this is about me. Oh, yeah. so it's called the nicest compliment. So I received the nicest compliment I'd ever received before. I hold on. I'm going to I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it because I forget shit. Um. <laughs> Let me pull it back up. It was told to me by a, a man. Okay. A colleague or, you know, somebody that I might or may not work with. But somebody told me that I was intimidating and that I just looked to be intimidating. And so then right. I asked, well, do you think I'm intimidating? And the response was, you remind me of a Viking woman. I think that's one of the best compliments I can give. And I was like, what the fuck? I immediately thought of the horns and I was like, what are you talking about? And they went on to say that uh, in the Viking culture, women were equaled, revered, worship, yet still went into battle. Mm-hmm. And I woke up the next day thinking about that because it's probably... It is the best compliment I've received in a long time. It had nothing to do with my looks, with the color of my eyes, with my smile, dimple, any of that bullshit. Right. There was a colleague that referred to me as an equal. Yes, because of your hard work. I and loved per- it. Absolutely, as you should have. Loved it. And... He's not wrong. I mean, so like, I know. And here's the other thing. Um, so, you know, he says you're intimidating and everyone assumes that intimidating is bad, but it's all about perspective too. Cause I read this thing on Twitter and it said, someone said you're intimidating and someone goes, well, am I intimidating or are you intimidated? Oh so, yeah. Yeah. I right. Mean, so really, is it me or is it you? Right. Right. So the other but, part I liked from it is, you know, revered is obviously respected, which, mm-hmm. you know, there's nothing more than me being a female that I want from men. Right. There's I hate being a girl in an all male industry because I want to I want to be one of the guys. I, w- I don't want them to treat me any differently. So to hear that compliment and to know that that's the way at least this individual saw me meant a lot to me. Right. And then the word worship also makes well, me feel very good. <laughs> so Nate was like, fuck that guy. No, no, no. He's totally right. <laughs> he doesn't know you well enough to know what he just did to your head. Because then the next morning I was like, I should start a cult where people oh, just worship me. And Lorelai's going, I'm not joining your cult. Wasn't there a one point you were going to start a cult? Oh, yeah. Like a year ago. Uh And like we were seriously having a conversation about what would happen in the Sabrina cult. Yeah, I'm down for it. This is the thing about no shit, Sherlock. (laughs) This is the thing is that you'll be a member of my cult before you even know it's happening. That's what I told Lorelai. I was like, it's going to happen. So now is this a recruitment process? Is our podcast a recruitment process (laughs) that I don't know about? Right. 
You're like, I'm going to make Tabby feel all good. Be like, oh, we're going to do a podcast together. I want Tabby. And be like, my first victim. Right. Meanwhile, here I am plotting um, how to create my own cult, which I do know how to do because I've listened to a lot of podcasts and documentaries about cults and why people become active members. So, yes, welcome. I haven't come up with a name with it yet, but be prepared to worship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I even told Nate, I was like, stop telling me you love me and instead replace that word with, I worship you. <laughs> he's not doing it, though. He's not listening. Well, at least he's, you know. <laughs> yeah, thank God. So anyways, what I just. wrong with um, you? I know. There's lots. I do like, <laughs> like, uh, going back to Garth Brooks, Charlie's Angels. This compliment came because it was deserved and not to toot my own horn, but because I work very hard. And so for for that man to say that, it meant more to me than, say, if a woman said it to me, because he respects me and sees me as an equal. And there's nothing more that in my world that I want more than just to be an equal to a man. Right. Right. And yes, absolutely. And you do that without whining and bitching and demanding it without merit. Exactly. Because if you want to be an equal, you have to be an equal, the good and the bad. Right. Right. All right. Back to the grab bag. All right. You do realize I can hear Link snoring. You know, he's right here. He's like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) IG, Instagram. Oh, yay. Okay. Instagram is removing its likes. It's, um, It's done it in other countries. It tested it in smaller regions, and now it's coming to the U.S. So if you post a picture, Mm -hmm. and I think, like, if you post a picture, I can't go and like it anymore, right? Or it doesn't reflect how many likes. Well, see, that's where I get confused. So I I heard that it's not going to show the likes, but you could be, but as the person who posted it, you can still look back and see who's liked it. Mm-hmm. So you can still check to see how many likes your post is actually getting for promotional content. So you can get an idea of what people are still wanting to see. So yeah, it says Instagram is hiding the likes. Right. So you can still like something because you want to like it, but you can't see how many people have liked it. Right. So As yeah, the that's viewer. The, right. Yeah, the number of likes typically displayed under the user's posts will no longer be visible. Correct. And then what? But on the back end, like I said, as the owner of the post, you can still see the number of likes. So what do you think about that? I don't see the point. Mm-hmm. How come? I really don't. So if you're liking a if you were liking a photo because you like it, the number of likes really shouldn't make a difference whether you click the like or not. Mm-hmm. The hide the only actually, if you're gonna hide the likes, it makes it harder for you to spot fake accounts, right? Because if you now hide the likes, so like people go out and buy followers, mm-hmm. right? You can literally go out and you can buy a million followers, put out the post, but then if you go and look at their content and they don't have, they only have five or 10 likes and only, you know, two or three comments, you know, they bought their followers and they're not, they're not organic. Right. So, and then you tend to stay away from them. Right. Yeah. I agree with that. And I think that, um, well, so now I'm a little confused because it, it, all the articles I've read, and I just pulled up a Fox News, says that they're doing it so it's about young people. The idea to try to depressurize Instagram, make it less about the competition, and give people more space to focus on connecting with people that they love and things that they inspire them. Well, then nobody should see it. You shouldn't be able to see it. They shouldn't be able to see it. Because then I'm still counting my like and, and getting validation from right. other people's approval from it. So then what's the point? Just so you can't see it? Doesn't I make think, any sense. Yeah, I would think that it'd be more impactful if they just removed it altogether. Right. And I thought that's what they were originally doing. They were removing it, not right. just hiding it. 
So if, because the whole point, like you said, was that there are too many people and not just young people as well, adults, and there's businesses that are getting their validation from this number. Right. And what's happening is when they get a post that takes off on the numbers, they start replicating it. Exactly. And they and they lose their authenticity. So that's the that's the bad part. And then when it changes and it goes down and they're like, "Oh, I'm so sad." You know, and that's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to produce what you want to produce because you're liking what it is. Right. Not because it's going to get the most results. Right. I agree with that. And I think that I would support it. I think this is a waste of time. I think that just removing it so that I can't see it. Well, what's what's the big deal? I never go back and say, oh, well, I like Tabby's picture. Let me see how many likes she received on it. Exactly. And what difference would it make to you how many likes I got on my picture? Right. But Unless... See, the likes would be the validation to me as the person who posted it, not to right. you. Right. I think the only way that it it would be helpful is authenticity so that if apparently based on this, the reason they're doing it, apparently people like stuff and then they're just recreating it, right? So then I can see this being a way to create more authentic posts. If somebody okay. is just, let's say, a copycat. Okay, I can see that. But I still don't think, I don't think that's the bigger issue. I think the bigger issue is the validation we all get from getting 200 likes on a post, getting 200 comments on a post is more concerning that we need that validation in our lives over Mm. than just sharing with no intent. Exactly. Correct. And, but, and I can see it from another side is as a, business owner. So you guys know I promote my book and I create content for our books and for this podcast. And I look at our numbers. Right. Not and so I can see what works and what doesn't work. And you know, as someone who's trying to promote, you stick with what works right. to an extent, but not so much. Right, right. I like I saw um uh, or I was listening to the Brilliant Idiot podcast and they were talking about IG and uh, the removing of the likes because um, the host, Andrew Schultz, post a lot of his few minute uh, comedian clips on there. And mm-hmm. for the same reason of just, you know, it's just little advertisements to kind of get you to his YouTube page. And it said, uh, Charlemagne the God said, how can you grow your own self-esteem while you're searching for validation for others? So beyond the business side of it, I thought that that was so important that the validation of receiving likes should not equal your self-worth or, yep. or lessen that moment, right? You share a moment of you and your kid, but only receive three likes. Who gives a fuck? Right. And if you're putting you and your family on there for validation from somebody else, there is something deeply wrong. Right. And, and I think that's part of the biggest problem that we have with all this technology is that we've allowed our children ex- and, you know, and, and our adults are becoming more susceptible to it is that you're getting your validation through a computer. Right. Through a click. You're not getting your validation from actually going out and doing something. Yeah, from strangers, not right. the people that are around you. No, on it's a, strangers. And, and also not from developing it on your own, right? There is strength in being independently mentally healthy uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to your self-esteem and your self-worth. And nobody provides that to you. You build that on your own. Right. And when it's connected to a platform of strangers, what if that platform left tomorrow? Are you now nothing? Right, exactly. I mean, so if all social media collapses, who are you? Right. And I think this ties back into, you know, we talked about last time about I'm so against basic bitchness, right? Uh 
Mm-hmm. This is part of it because the internet and all of this is basic bitch. People are copying each other. Nobody's producing. Yeah. Yeah. That producing. makes sense. Nobody's real. And all y'all motherfuckers are going to fucking disappear and not to know what the hell to do with yourselves. Right. And I, that's part of why I'm like, nope, that's not me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think the part that I like too. So if the part that I would agree with, if they would just remove likes altogether mm-hmm. is that originally I don't believe. And if we go back to like Facebook, it, you remember like likes and love and laugh and all that stuff was yep. there. So you had to put like, ha ha ha. That was funny. And now there was interaction rather than just scroll, click, scroll, click, scroll, click, scroll, right. click. That I kind of like going backwards a little bit to looking at somebody's picture and instead of just hitting like saying, oh my God, your kid's smile made me smile today. Exactly. Making you have to interact. Right. I yes. like, I like that idea better. So uh, this IG thing, I think is stupid. I think it's no, pointless. It's, it, it's not going to do anything. No, especially if their reason behind it is validation. Nate told me that when he originally heard about it, too, that it was supposed to help against extremists. So people committing murder, suicide, mass shootings and recording it because apparently they say, you know, the way that social media is, is, is that you record it, you post it online and then these people see it and this validation you get from it. So now you have these psychopaths or narcissists that want that same feeling. Well, if they're still getting the likes and the views and can track it. Right. On the back end there, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah. You're not helping that. The only way that you're helping is if I'm the third party psycho watching it and I can't see that other people liked it. Right. So, and the other thing that it may help with in that scenario is that. I don't know if you know anything about the algorithms, but when you like a post, it promotes it to the top. When you oh. someone comments, it promotes it back to the top. So people who are scrolling and there's a lot of likes are more likely to see it okay. than if you know it doesn't have that many likes. Mm-hmm. That would be the only thing I could see is that by not being able to click that button, it demotes the algorithm. Right. Do you think that if they removed the likes altogether that people would stop posting? No, absolutely not. They would figure a way around it. Yeah, I I think that there'd be a great deal of people that would stop posting. The people that truly depend on that validation, um, especially I would say a younger generation that needs that validation of a like, if they removed it altogether, would find another platform to go get it from. Correct. And what would probably happen is they wouldn't base it on likes anymore. They would base it on how many comments I get and, or they would create um, links in the photos and then they would base it off of clicks. And then how many people go to my website or go to this other site. And there's a million and one ways these kids can get validation Mm -hmm. from these sites. Yeah, I agree. I think that they would just go and find it another way rather than, Again, developing that that self-esteem right. and self-worth inside themselves. Right. Like TikTok, mm-hmm. you can see how many views, how many people have seen your video. Right. That number in itself is a validation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree because Lorelai mentions it all the time. What I do, this is the part that I do like about it. It's, I, 